Hey, Legends, welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. Big episode today. Your boy got in a scuffle with Richmond. Who would have thought? NRL went to Vegas. They got on the piss, I'm sure. And lastly, someone got hit in the head pretty high over the weekend. We're going to talk about that and much, much more in this episode starting now. All right, Legends, welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. We've got heaps of stuff to cover here, but without further ado, Brayden, welcome to the podcast. Well, Mace, I want to get your opinion on something right off the top because mm. I think, have you mentioned it? You're from America, from memory? Yeah, y- yes, yes, I am. Yeah, yes, yes, I am an American. Yes. Now, you know who's not from America? The AFL, they don't want a bar of it, but the NRL. <laughs> They have just been to Las Vegas. Las Vegas, viva! Las Vegas, baby. Uh, I want to get your feedback on everything about that because I tuned in. They converted Mm. me. Well, less so to the sport once the sport started. Uh, But before that, the build-up, the the stadium, the show, the extravaganza, the Mm. bright lights of Las Vegas. I was in, so I was tuned in. Did you tune in? What did you think of the whole thing? I saw a little bit of the game. I saw a lot of the pregame stuff and yeah. then like them going over there and hamming it up and all the different like they did the fit checks before the game. They got to wear whatever they wanted. Take note, AFL. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, they got to do all this stuff. And I feel like the Vegas, you know, I guess lifestyle very much matches what rugby mm. people love. And that is a good damn party. So it was very well on brand for the NRL to go to Vegas of all places in America. Yeah. And I love the show of it. The whole thing from all the social media clips to them being over there early and doing all the different PR and media and getting Gronk involved and all these things that were happening. It was an incredible PR just experience for the NRL. Was it a missed opportunity for the AFL? What do you think my answer is, Brayden? <laughs> I'm just trying to poke you. But yes. I did like, did you see the videos going in of like the, you know how they put the grass on the rollers yeah. and they just roll it into the just, stadium? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Just park that, back that up. Beep, 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 And they beep. still had the numbers on there and the logo from like the Chiefs in the yeah. Super Bowl and they're standing oh, in the spot the going like, this is where uh, Mahomes threw the match winner. Mm. Like, it was just cool. The vibe, it felt like a big game atmosphere, like yep. a marquee game. The desk on the field, I'm a fan of the broadcast stuff, and that yeah, yeah. always just feels extra special when you got the desk and the commentators down on the ground level. Mm. The grass looked mint. The deck looked – they chewed that up. That's gone. <laughs> That's gone. <laughs> Never using that again. roll that out of the stadium and just throw it in the bin because yep. it's done. Uh, what did you think from a – you know, a game perspective? The crowd came in, the top tier, a little thin, but saying that, NRL is kind of a bit thin when it's back here in Australia. So. Well, I, think, I think their audience they wanted was 40,000. I don't think they got that. Mm. But just to get like thousands and thousands of people to take notice of it in America, uh, obviously a massive market over there. Rugby is becoming very big over there in that sense. So it was a great opportunity then for them to be able to showcase, I guess, rugby outside of the country in America. Um, so it was, it was awesome. Because, I mean, I think of rugby, right? Rugby is like bounds ahead of the AFL as far as acknowledgement and knowledge of it outside of this country. Like everyone goes, oh, you play AFL. Is that is that rugby? Is that rugby? Yeah. Like, And everyone knows that, but a lot of people don't want to admit that because the AFL is not known outside of it. Everyone thinks we're rugby. Everyone thinks that's what the, uh, the league is. But I think these things that are happening over in America and around the world being more of an international game, I guess that's played. Uh, definitely helps them in being able to get attention from more people and more eyes. Did you ever see that ad growing up? The I like to see that with like Evander Holyfield and who was it? Carl Lewis. Carl Lewis, no. the guy that runs real quick. Yeah, he. No. They were like the they were showcasing it in America, and they're like guys that jump real high. I'd like to see that, and then yeah. they'd show highlights and stuff. Oh, no, I've never seen it. But there was a lot of, like, American NFL players, and they were just like, I want fucking nothing to do with NRL. <laughs> yeah. like, these guys are trying to kill each other without pads. And I, that's the that's the selling point, right? Like, yeah. if AFL, NRL, anything like that, it's we're crazy Australians from a foreign land that just don't give a shit about our health and safety. And that's what people love in America. So you sell that side of it. I think they did pretty well. Damn. I'm jealous. I'm very jealous of what they did over there, and it's hopefully something – I don't know if it'll happen in my lifetime, but hopefully at some point we can play a game over there and and get the attention the AFL well deserves. Let's jump into something <laughs> a bit more serious, and mm. we'll get on to this off the top of the podcast because Big we sp- we spoke about it just last Massive week. Massive hit! Like this isn't that long ago. 
preseason. Yes. You think, let's just ease into mm. this bad yep. boy. But no, Jimmy Webster, massive incident, comes out and almost takes Jai uh, Simpkins' head clean off his shoulders. Wild. It, real, like, it was one of those incidents when I saw it, shocked. Yeah. Called out to my housemate, you got to see this. Yep. It, like crazy. And he, he's gobsmacked. It's you know, it's hard to fathom seeing this in the regular season, let alone in the preseason, let alone a week after, you know, Power Pepper just got four weeks for his yeah. incident. So, yeah, I don't know. We spoke about it last week, and I said that I feel like the players are the last line of mitigating risk towards themselves because mm-hmm. the AFL is doing what they can do, the clubs are doing what they can do, and then a couple of percent of AFL players are just going rogue out there. I don't know. What did you think when you first saw the incident? It, it looked pretty serious. Oh, dude, I was just like, you know, you, you see something like that happen, you're like, oh, geez, that's not good. That is not good. And the like, it's kind of weird that like AFL kind of like put it up on their socials right away, like the hit and stuff. You know, like whenever yeah. something big like that happens, I feel like you almost need to maybe just like take a step back before you start posting that kind of stuff because it's yeah. not a great look for the league. Um, Jimmy Webster, he's come out and, yeah, he's admitted he did, you know, something that was wrong. And, um, as you would expect from himself in the club, uh, it was not a good look at all. It was one of those things where he's left the ground, you know, jumped up and then it didn't even look like he was really trying to smother it. He was going straight for body. So, yeah. um, yeah, not good. And it was high. Like I think of, you know, different situations with similar, like you, you look at the one, um, Tr- uh, Charlie Cameron, uh, in the grand final, hitting Jeremy Howe, yeah. goes for the body, Ribs. gets the rib. Uh, there's things like that. Now, I reckon he'll actually be completely taken out of the game. I think the AFL, if the ball leaves the foot and you hit someone like that, like there's going to be some kind of, uh, you know, it's going to be probably a week or two. Yeah, looking at that and basing it off, you know, the Sal- a Sam Powell Pepper hit that was only a week ago that got four, I'm seeing this. I don't think there would be an argument. And normally there's, you know, to and fro in the comment section. It was pretty unanimous, like six to 10, like big penalty yeah. coming his way. Ross Lyon said, you know, he's going to get what he gets. Yeah. Like, so. Well, then everyone knows he's going to get suspended. It's just a matter of how long. Yeah. And the, yeah, this is, you know, straight to tribunal, plead your case, but there's not much of a case to plead because. This feels like back in the day, they used to give you the DVD of like things you can't do. This would be the prime example. Like yep. knew he wasn't going to get there in time, left the ground, contact with the head, severe contact mm. leading to a concussion. It's it's cut and dry. It's got all the workings to be a terrible experience it's for cut everyone. and dry in terms of a suspension. It's just a matter of how long. Uh, there was some interesting bite play after the fact uh, where Jimmy Webster's family oh. has gotten involved on social media. Now, obviously, Jeez. he can't control what his family has, yeah. has done, but being a player and being in many incidents mm. both on – the receiving and the giving. I've done side some of dumb things. shit on the football field. Don't get me wrong, Braden. I know that's a nice way of putting <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Have um, you ever had to, you know, tell your family to rein it in or say just be careful because you know they're in the public eye too? Yeah, and I've I've been pretty uh, open about my family and you know the relationship I have with them and bringing them along my AFL journey. Uh, they do have social media. Both my brothers, my mom and dad, all have social media. Um, I think it's one of those things um, you want to protect them as much as you can, but you mm. know they're going to be able to see things just as much as you can. Uh, my family, especially my mother, will, will always send me a text message, um, you know, asking me how I'm doing just randomly out of the blue. And I, I usually know what that means. That means someone's wrote a, a dirty article on me. Yeah. <laughs> so I try not to Google things pretty quickly after that. But um, yeah, she's uh, she sees it just as much as anyone else. You know, and I understand like family wants to protect their own and and all that, but I think some of the comments um, after that, you got to probably just stay away from social media, whether it be Jimmy, the family, everyone else. I think it's best just to to stay off it for a little bit, let the uh, let the dust settle, and let everything kind of get sorted out. And you know, I've I've had the conversation with my family to to not kind of bite back at people. Um, obviously, there's negative things and people that say things on the internet, but um, there's no benefit. I feel like from family members getting involved in my you know professional life in that sense in a negative way. Um, it's just, you got to think of it as like if you were a CEO of a, a company and then like you're someone sacks you and your mother's like, I hate you, company. You're a terrible person. It's like that's not going to help you get a job at the next place, right? Yeah. So it's one of those things you got to be aware of. Um, you know, if you have a public eye in your professional life, like it's not only your responsibility, but it's the people you surround yourself's responsibility to make sure that they don't uh, comment inappropriate things. The problem is you can never beat the internet. No, no <laughs> you, can, that's it. you can never beat the internet. You're never going to get them to go, you know what? 
Valid point. Val- yeah, that will never happen <laughs> in this life, I guarantee you. Now, you did jump on the internet. You're pretty good at these types mm. of things. You jumped on X Stir or whatever you jumped on. But, Stir um, the pot. I want to ask you in person, yep. Sinbin, you brought this up as a uh, a potential solution for some of these incidents. Yep. Uh, do you believe there should be a Sinbin in the AFL? Um, I think there should be some version of a sin bin, whether it be it is whether it is a sin bin or not. I'm not really sure how they would kind of structure it, but I think there needs to be adjudication, not by the umpires on the field. Uh, they can call a free kick and everything else, and say you know you're um, under report and all that. But I think there needs to be someone that's watching the vision up top in the arc or wherever that room is that they kind of make these decisions for goals and stuff. Um, to decide whether or not a player needs to be able to continue playing on. I think in local leagues you have like yellow cards and red cards and things like that. It um, doesn't make sense that in a professional standpoint, you can literally go out there, punch 10 people in the face, and still play through the rest of the game. It is pretty wild. It's like it? the only game in the world that I know that that kind of exists. There's mm. no you know, repercussions to doing something like that. You can still play the game out. So I'm not really sure how it would be structured, but I do think there needs to be something where if someone literally gets in a fist fight, they shouldn't be able to play the rest of the game. Yeah. Like there, whether it means you have to take them off fully, put your sub in, whatever it is, I'm not sure, but it bla- like it baffles me that the IFL doesn't have any kind of, you know, punishment for doing an extremely dirty act on field. Like just beyond Jimmy's thing, like just in general, it it kind of blows my mind. There'd have to be a fair bit of restructuring around it, and yeah, but yeah, I could see it coming in. I could I could see it coming in pretty soon. Yep. Like uh, the more that incidents like this happens, we're we're two and zero. So if someone comes out next week and does it again, we got to get to a solution yep. because we can't just he- keep you know having these concussions out there. We will get into the Amy Community Series, Ooh. but I just want yes. to bring up that name, Community Series, because obviously AFL mm. invested a lot of money, a billion dollars, into yep. growing the into game. Grassroots. And we're heading up to New South Wales, and we're yep. going to Queensland, but we're no longer seem to be going to. Bendigo and Mildura and Aubrey and what happened to these? You mean playing at Icon Park is not community? How the hell is it a community <laughs> series? I didn't say that. We're playing at our arch rivals like training ground. We're not even. <laughs> Geelong played in Geelong. Yeah. They didn't even leave. I know they're a country uh, town. They're in the community. We're all in the community. Melbourne's, oh yeah, the MCG is in mm, the community. Yeah. We're, but yeah, I just thought it was a, it's a bit disappointing being a Chuka boy. Yeah, Harrow on the deck, he's would, a Rochi yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah. You're from America, it doesn't count. Yeah. But I feel like <laughs> <laughs> we're never going there. Um, but yeah, I feel like we're missing out. I used mm. to remember when Richo came down and kicked snags at the Moama Oval, and yeah. I was like, froth and footy. Oh, dude, this but that's gone. gone. Now, because we're playing down at Icon Park, double header back to back, what's yep. going on, mate? So I don't want to get um, you in trouble, but. We need some answers. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think we we would love to go play in the community. And I think that's uh, – we do spend time in the community. Don't get me wrong. There is – we've been to Moe this year. We've done uh, community work out there. And we brought the cup and then went down to Fish Creek and all these kind of places that are very much community. But I think the the more we get into this, you know, we used to have like three preseason, preseason games. And we yeah. had like the NAB Cup. And now we've got two preseason – or sorry, really one preseason game. We had a North Melbourne, which was – yeah. You know, not even televised. Or I guess it wasn't KO, but it wasn't like proper Foxtel. And uh, I think as the years go on, teams don't really value uh, broadcasting a preseason game. No. Like there's no reason to show your cards early in that sense in a preseason game. And they're more interested in doing scenario-based stuff, whether it be, you know, like, you know, try to win the game with five minutes left. Like, they like being able to manipulate the time, manipulate the situation, where if you're in broadcast and you're, like, over the weekend we're playing Richmond, like, we couldn't just stop the game and be like, oh, hold on, we're going to do a scenario. Five minutes, we're going to have you up by six points, we're going to have you down by six points. That doesn't exist. And I think that's what teams want to train and practice the most is being able to do those situations and being able to manipulate the game. And whenever you're doing broadcast, you're contractually required to just play a regular game. Yeah. And I don't think teams want to do that. They want to be able to do what a preseason game is meant for, which is train different situations and train different things that come in a, come up in a game. And I think the longer we go, the more it's going to turn into broadcast is not going to really be a thing of it. And it's yeah. just going to be, hey, we're going to play two games in the preseason against whatever teams we match up in. And we're going to have full control over what it's going to look like. It's that whole mentality. you got to give back to the game. And I feel like the schedules of the players have gotten tighter. The broadcasters have gotten tighter. Yeah. So you lose that ability to just be like, we're going to go play a game here and there and everywhere. Yeah. And yeah. I if you're going to do broadcast, you got to set up a whole broadcasting experience in a very rural town. Yeah. 
And it's not always the easiest thing to do. And it doesn't always look best on television whenever you only really have one main camera. You don't have all the the gadgets and widgets and everything else that go mm-hmm. with, I guess, a, a game at Icon Park or a game at the MCG or wherever it may be at such training ground or, or Oval. We need to get to the bottom of that. We need to get back out in the community. Mm. Put Achuka back on the calendar. Oy. We're getting out there. Let's jump into these games because they're not going to review themselves, man. Right, now we'll put your game First last. First full review of yeah. actual games We're this year. We're back into the footy. It's now, exciting. I've been... I feel good. I feel chomping good, at Brady. the bit. Chomping at the bit to get <laughs> into it because, geez, it's hard to do a footy podcast, Mace, when there's no bloody footy on. So oh, I actually good. enjoyed the fan question one. Yeah, the fan that question one. Actually, was legit. Anyway, anyway, get into it. Get we into digress. It. We'll put your game last. So we'll yes. jump into Carlton, Melbourne. And boy, Carlton fans, are you nervous or what? Because you had another bit of a stinker. <laughs> so just put it out there. But Harry and Charlie kick three each. So, you know, they're on the board, which is good. Melbourne, yep. you know, their concerns with the, the mid forward connection. That yep. looked good. Clayton Oliver playing good footy. He's been selected for the start of the season. So mm-hmm. it, they looked out of the whole game. There were some positives. Gone 24 disposals, two goals, 30 hitouts. Gorney just. That is just, that's delicious. Yeah. If you're looking at super coach, you're going, yep, I'll pick him number one. He just doesn't <laughs> slow down. He just doesn't stop. I've never seen like a contest to contest and he's always out marking everyone. He's, he just, he's one of the best contested marks you'll ever see. Like, it's actually so impressive. And he gets around the ground so well. And I'm like, for a guy your size, you just have an incredible tank. I don't I don't know how. I don't know what he does in the offseason to prep for it. But it is, it's a, he's a physical mm. specimen. Well, we know he's off the darts because he can't be running around <laughs> taking marks like that if he's still sucking on the, on the <laughs> oh, lung bursters. Oh, man. But, yeah, I don't know. If, if you're heading into the preseason, you're coming out. If, if your team's like 0-2 in the preseason mm. – you're writing it off. Oh, preseason's nothing. Yep. That's nothing. If your team's 2-0 and coming out of the preseason, geez, we're looking oh, hot, you're boys. You're too hyped. <laughs> so so it. take it with a grain of salt. We head up to Sydney. We played yep. in Newtown. Sydney v. Brizzy. Brizzy got the chocolates. Yep. Uh, there was a fair looking bit good. that went down in this game. Mm. Snakes everywhere, Mace. <laughs> Small but deadly. Like, We're talking about snake spread and not something else. You know, I don't know if you could just look at one. You've been in Australia. You should be able to look at it and yeah, go, brown snakes. yeah, that's a red belly brown snake. Uh, you just got to be able to. Was it red and yellow kill a fellow? Yeah. Yellow and black. Don't worry, Jack, or something like that. They're all Do bad. not take that <laughs> as actual factual information, people. I don't want to be blamed for someone getting bitten by a poisonous snake and dying. Oh, uh, yeah, there's the snake there. Oh, don't worry. Mace said something about brown Jack, something. <laughs> Yellow and black didn't kill Jack. I don't know who he is, but somehow he doesn't get affected by poison. I think if you just go, all snakes are bad. Yep, I agree. Don't mess don't with them. them. They won't mess with you. Yep, so uh, but they did mess with this snake because it messed with the start of the game. So yep. they called out that... Uh, snake catcher. It's the must, second time of this place. He must be on retainer for some of that big <laughs> cash. Every time they come into Newtown, I reckon he just drops a snake out there. Oh, he needs a TikTok <laughs> account, I reckon. <laughs> oh, snake, call that one oh, in. Oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, but then, so snakes, extreme heat. Yep. Lights couldn't crank on. It's a very good start to the <laughs> <laughs> There was a shambles up there uh, at Newtown. But uh, yep. unfortunately, mm. we wanted to see... You, you not only Brody Grundy go out there and dominate, but we wanted yep. to see Taylor Adams, who unfortunately lateral ligament strain, mm. three to four weeks. Not you know, not the end of the season, which is good. We can take positives out of that. You don't yeah. want any injuries. You don't want knee injuries. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, a little hiccup. Lucky mm. we got round zero and we got extra rounds. Yeah, he can come back and he'll still make. That's pretty much the start of the season. I think he's, what, three to four weeks with a, what was it, lateral ligament strain, the yeah. LLS. The LLS. we're calling it. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's tough to see him go down. Obviously, new team. Uh, he's playing us in two weeks, which I'm sure he would have wanted to be part of that game. Mm. Um, and now he's going to probably miss that. So I can imagine uh, you feel for Ty. Like, he's an incredible person. Gave a lot to our club, obviously, while he's there. And uh, was part of our leadership and everything else. And I always have a soft spot for him. So... Wishing him all the best in recovery, legend, and um, hopefully we see you back out there soon. He is an avid listener of mm. the Mason Cox show. Is he? We will go to his do, old... Do you DM you that? <laughs> yeah, all the time. Uh, uh, we go to his former club, former, yep. former club, GWS versus Oy. the Gold Coast Suns. GWS got the big, chocolates. Big I've said chocolates twice, so mm. giving out a lot of chocolates. Uh, Lukosius, Lickitung, la 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 la. Oh, He's back, four goals. Luscious, luscious. Toby Green, three goals, three behinds. Don't worry about the behinds. He'll get there. Yep. Uh, ben King signed a mammoth contract. Yep. That usually means one thing and one thing only, Braden. <laughs> he just had a, let's just simmer down a bit. He had four <laughs> touches, kicked it behind. So he's just 
Let's relax. We signed the contract now. Well, how many years does he have just to chill out? He's got a monster. A fair bit. You know, fair he, bit he's, he's on the big milli. We're just putting that out there. That's mm. that's not set in stone. So, But we're saying he's definitely on a million. Uh, Brent Daniels, goal over the shoulder, over the head. Yeah. One of those ones. They're they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty exciting. Saying say. that, he's like... Does that get like a goal a year if you do like a bicycle kick goal? Some do. Luke yeah. Parkers, remember Luke Parkers yeah, was like was a freakish, full bicycle. Though. That was absurd. See, Brent Daniels is like, he's like, what, five, seven? So a kick over your head. Yeah. Not that amazing. Kick over what your if, head, what seven like, foot. Would, it, would this be like goal of the year if you're like boundary throw in, two Rockman go at it, yep. you kick it out of the air from a boundary throw and it goes in? Like, nah. don't even, like, hand to foot, just straight out of the air, bang. I mean, it's pretty— I did that in training once, and yeah. I still think it's the greatest goal I've ever kicked. Were you trying to do it? Yeah. Okay. I was. It was kind of one of those things I was like, uh, so it was a shit throwing. I was like, they played on the this. replay of the grand final the other day? <laughs> yeah. That one that you had, and you got it out of the ruck contest and snapped oh, it and missed? Yes. That would have just— gave me a huge spray, because I'm pretty sure he was open there. He can't get them all. Leave some ball for oh, someone no. else. Jeez, oh, no. let him have a crack. No, that was a fair call. So let's move on. We got the Geelong Cats. Now they've played down to the Cattery. I just want to touch on this. So yep. right, they play in Geelong for their preseason game. Yep. And then they get looked after the first round. They're playing in Geelong again. Yeah. Have they figured out their stadium? Is it done yet? I feel like it's been 10 years in the making. I don't I don't think I don't it's know, done. That side or whatever it is. It'll never stadium. be done. They because... have an incredible insides, but that stand on like whatever the east side, I think, of the stadium. Yeah. It's been going for ages, I feel like. It's what's on the inside that counts, yep. mate. This is it. what my mum always used to say. Let's jump into oh. the game. Geelong, 83 to Essendon, 71. Yeah. But not all downside for Essendon. Nick Martin, two goals, 28 touches. Mm. Uh, so he looked good. Gresham, new club. Uh, he kicked two goals, two behinds, uh, 14 touches. So it's good to see, you know, the new players running around there. You get excited yeah, this time. It's a year. lot of hype with us, then. a lot of trades in the off season. So they're definitely seeing uh, what they can produce. Yeah. You, I like it when your club gets in a new mm. influx of players. Uh, you miss out on exciting draft picks, but they take a while. So. Yeah, well, you know. It is what it is. It is what it is. That's <laughs> trying that's, to make finals. That's, that's what they're trying to do. That's the first thing they got to do. Uh, but unfortunately, something that mightn't help them in their pursuit for finals: Ridley quad injury. Yes, uh, he just signed a big six-year deal. This is a this is a theme. You yeah. you, you sign a big deal yeah. and bad things happen. Yeah, yes. I think I signed my deal and got two years and got dropped. I think a week later. Yeah. That's. <laughs> They're, it's just how it happens. I don't know why. Holding, These things just news. happen. They're holding off that news being like, he'll come good. He'll come good. <laughs> Usually a finals uh, type but player. But it does happen quite often. It's a weird There's, dynamic. You know, yeah. we don't want to start slinging, but like Brody no, no, Grundy, no. massive deal. Mm. Uh, uh, Clayton Oliver, massive deal. Yep. We Massive deals all over the shop. Maybe maybe let's go two, three-year deals. Yeah, okay. No, we're for the players. Big deals. Big we're deals. for big deals. We love big deals. Big so dollars. you would still take big the seven-year. I would take if whatever. You, if they came to you with a big seven-year, would you believe it? No. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it would, seven years would almost put me at 40 It playing. would be a wild Do prank. Do I look like Boomer Harvey? <laughs> it would be a wild prank. Imagine that. Uh, it's probably not the place to uh, joke. You if know, Graham Wright in. did just leave for Europe, so if there's any time to do it, it's now. If you walk in just with a note, a handwritten note said, oh, right, he said seven right. years. I don't it's know. Weird. That was the last thing you said out the door. He <laughs> said, just give Mason seven years. I don't know. He said it. Uh, <laughs> but one funny thing that came out of this game, Guelphie. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't say oh my gosh, yes. solidified spot in the in the spot, in the the team. So yeah, okay. you want to just do everything right when yep. you're on those fringes. Uh, but he hit a banana, like a genuine check side banana yeah. from – a set shot about, what, 12 metres out? It's confidence 101, isn't it? Or is, that the, is that the classic uh, just preseason get me through this? But, yeah, he missed. If he had got it, yeah. I still think he would have got sprayed, wouldn't you? I think it probably comes up as a bit of a joke in the uh, you know the post-game maybe yeah. review. I get the snap. You can replicate it. Jack used to do that all the time, Rewalt. He would always yeah. like snap from like... 10 meters out in front. Yeah. Stevie J, obviously, named after yeah. him, the J curve. But The J curve. Um, Are we talking about his kicking? I haven't seen yet. <laughs> I, haven't seen, <laughs> I haven't seen many bananas from the set shot. Uh, anyway, moving on, we go straight oh, into God, the Port see. Adelaide versus Fremantle Dockers game, and I'm sorry, Fremantle Port Dockers is, fans. Hey, Port's a good team. Oh, God. Port yeah, is a good are. team. They are. So hopefully, hopefully, Frio, you can rest uh, on that because – 
Not a great performance out mm. of you guys. Last year, finished rough. And then you lost Schultz. I don't know. Let's not... Collingwood player over here. Let's, you know, Love forgive, that trade. forget. Great trade. Big fan of that trade. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what is going to happen to Frio this year, and I feel terrible about it. I feel this. I, I have no idea. I feel like there's a team that either is going to be up top or down below. They're not going to be in the middle. I it's don't like see one it. or the other. And I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be an extreme either way. I honestly, I don't see it. I look at that list, and although promising a couple of years ago, teams have just gone past them. In my opinion, humble opinion, yeah. Uh, my non-football playing opinion, but yeah, I don't, I just look at other lists that they're like they've got some good midfielders and mm. they got some good forwards. Like they got bits and pieces, but it's so competitive at the top end of the ladder because like yeah. if you do the challenge, you sit down and you pick a top eight, you're picking twelve. Teams. Yeah, so I feel like this year especially, it's so hard. But I look at our first like six games, I'm like, I feel like we're playing top eight teams every game. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. You're like every week, you're like, God, oh, geez, what's with our fixture? It's a hard one. And then you're like, oh, all Everyone's teams are just like good. This. Yes, there's no game, no games off. But we're not writing free O off. It's yep. preseason. They lost to Port uh, and it was in Adelaide. It was at Port's home ground. They throw yep. a rock, they hit the front door. So. Yep. You know, they had it all on their side. Hayden Young, shining light out of this game. Two mm-hmm. goals, 26 touches, was everywhere, setting up everything. So he's an absolute jet, so much so that even though Port won, yep. they interviewed Hayden Young after the game, which you don't see very often. Don't see that very often, no. <laughs> but uh, Burton, Houston, Rosie, Wines, all looking good. So they're all the familiar Fit faces. Fiery. Uh, but one thing that, you know, Port, a little what rattled. Uh, we got Butters. You know Zach Butters? Yep. Hurt his ankle. No. Which you don't want to see in these times. But he How do you hurt, do it? hurt it in a real weird way. He was kind of just walking backwards and then rolled his ankle and then went down uh-huh. and then came off. So a bit of a divot or something. Maybe it was a sprinkler. Yeah. He actually joked after the fact saying like oh, he'd be right there. just a bit silly, really. <laughs> just a bit silly. You know, just a little uncoordinated. I times. do like bringing it back to there. you. And I've yeah, I've seen yeah. those ruck contests where your big flippers get all tied up. Yeah. And it's you a fall whole thing. Over. It's a lot of feet. <laughs> you're you're appealing Remember for the knocked free out kick. over the weekend by Tim Taranto, actually. Anyway, we'll get into that. But um yeah, what, what, no, we're going to the next game. Adelaide versus West Coast. Is West Coast? Are they back, baby? God, it's going to be a lot. This is, so let's just take a step back. Yep. They get the number one draft pick, right? They got uh, Harley Reid. Yep, a Absolute lot of pressure jet. on him. Yep. Yeah, but a lot of pressure. But you know what you like to do when you, your team is terrible? You like to get that number one draft pick and you you have a little like spark of happiness, like yep. a little bit of joy. A sliver of hope. We may be terrible for the next six to ten years. But we got Harley Reid. He's pretty good. So the let's future. We're looking at the future. We're looking at the future. We're looking, yep. Not Summer. You know, Summer Sumich uh, writes for the newspaper over there. Well, he left the newspaper. Long, oh. long-standing relationship because he's potting Harley Reid in the newspaper, going like, "Simmer down. He's not Chris Judd." It's yeah. like, let him have a little glimmer of hope. Well, he's mate. eighteen years old. Dude. Just <laughs> he let hasn't him played live, a game. dude. Let him live. Let him enjoy like the experience before it even starts. Oh, like far out. <laughs> geez, it's gonna be a sad little city over there. You kind of just hoping each other's opposition. They usually have some like one of the two teams is like actually really good. But yeah. like yeah, Frio, there's question marks around. West Coast obviously has had a bit of a rough trot last year, so it's it's going to be an interesting year for, I feel for, for like Perth in general. What we said about Frio, the little shining light for them is West Coast is worse. <laughs> so, so that's what they've got. Anyway, Adelaide dominated yep. West Coast 117 to 50. Oof. Not all upside because Riley Thilthorpe went yep. off injured meniscus. He'll miss the start of the season. So mm. they're down a forward. Lucky they've it's got a really forward potent forward line. So yep. as Big much boy. as it sucks, uh, they got Rankin who kicked four. Subtle Rochelle, down. our boy. Rochelle! Us, He uh, kicked 3-3. Three, three. He's my favorite player at Adelaide. He is awesome. I love his energy. Yeah. And I think he's going to be annoying as shit for other teams, which yeah. just makes me love him even more. Yeah. I like I like watching Adelaide games. They're yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, I agree. Um, and unfortunately, uh, got screwed out of finals last year. So hopefully they can come back and not, uh, not kick goals. Brayden, I'm going to throw a little nugget in here. Yeah. I had someone contact me from Adelaide this week. We had a bit of a chat over the phone. Oh God, that's Mason's going say. to Adelaide. No, nah, that's it's all the I'm trade is say. on. No, you'll be you'll love it if it comes through. Oh my anyway, God. we move on to the next one. Oh. Hawthorne versus Western Bulldogs. Jeepers. Oh, you would have hated that. Uh Hawks 
uh, you know, they're for what they are, an up and coming mm-hmm. AFL team, young side, young side, real chirpy. Chirpy young oh. kids out there. You know, they got Sicily running around as their captain. Lots Is he Sicily. still captain? He's their captain. Yeah. Telling them what to do, leading from the front. Sam Mitchell, also chirpy. He's their coach. Mm. So no wonder they're creating a little chirpy spawn. Confidence um, is key in the young fellas. But they were right up there. They were winning the whole game until they weren't winning. Uh, yeah. Halfway through the third and uh, the Bulldogs kicked 15 goals in the second half. 15 goals. Yeah. I don't know my math well enough, but I know that's a lot. Yeah, so they flogged them 119 to 62, but who was good? Our boy, Jack Ginevan. Ginevan. Uh, he was in everything early. Every time they kicked it into the forward line, Guinea was taking the mark. Had the Love long that. sleeve, made the how's brown he, and poo look good. He, yeah, no, the poo and, I poo and pink. Mind. Yeah, I think Guinea can pull off any kind of jumper and long sleeve, but yeah, that's the hardest to pull off. It is. It, it is the hardest color scheme to pull off and look good in. It actually, yeah, he, it's, it, it, he did look good. Yeah, well, we'll give it to Jack. <laughs> he can make anything look good. Uh, but the Bulldogs, cheapers. I was watching the first half and I was yep. like, oh, no, like what is going to happen to this Bulldogs team? Because mm. they are inconsistent. But luckily they came out, absolutely dominated the second half, and all of that is forgotten yep. because Jamari Ugo Hagen. Friend of the show. Norton, Aaron Norton, mm. four goals each combined for 12 marks total. That's a now that's a forward line. If they start doing that on a consistent four basis, four goals each, dude. You're just licking your lips wild. on a preseason game like that. <laughs> and you got that. And who's kicking it down to him? Bont, 32 the, the touches Bont. and a goal. He's just freak. Maybe. He, had, he had that goal I saw. He like burst through three Hawthorne players, like shoved everyone out of the way, just kicks one for 50 and just looked. It looks so casual that it just upset me. I was like, if I did that, it would be the greatest goal of my career. And he just does that on a consistent basis, basis with no care in the world. He glides. It, he, he does. Yeah. It's just like he's like a gazelle. Whenever he just runs, he just shoves people off. I always think like he's got that Pendlebury esque like where oh, everyone's careful. Careful. going flat out around him, and they're just yeah. Cruising. He slows the game down. I do agree. Um, but Jai Newcomb for the Hawks, he can chirp because he gets 37 touches every game. 37? So he's he's just going to keep getting more and more. He's going to be... Maybe we, needed, we had like the thing for Plummer. Maybe we like 40 touches we make uh, some kind of name for. Uh, uh, St. Kilda versus North Melbourne. Now, obviously, this game yeah. was marred by the uh, Jimmy Webster incident, mm. uh, which we won't touch. We've all, we're not backing over that one. Yep. Uh, but Saints got the job done. So, unfortunately, that soured their successful preseason campaign. Yep. They won both games. Top of the preseason ladder. Mm. With the percentage, I think they're around yeah. 185 percent. So wow. they're doing well, and they're doing well because they've got a pretty potent forward line up there. They got uh, Cooper Sharman, Mitch Owens, Tim Membry, Max King. They all got two goals. Yep. So that's spread out, spreading them around. Yep. That's not one guy kicking seven, and the rest they got their hat out asking for a free goal. But uh, it was a funny bit of uh, byplay off the back of this game because oh. Cam Zerha, he's uh, got his contract talk and he yeah, a lot of, he a lot kind of media attention around this this week. He pushed that back a little bit, uh, but Kane Corns. Uh, oh, you love a Kane Corns comment. He's sharp. He's sharp, and obviously, <laughs> uh, when Horny Frank left Horn Francis. North Melbourne and yep. went to Port Adelaide. So, uh, you know, he released the tote bag. He had a bit of, you know, chirp, a bit of something to yeah, say about him leaving. It. So Kane Corns just pointed out that Cam Zohar can't go anywhere. Yeah. If he's going to, you know, kick up a stink when Horny Frank leaves, well, he can't be leaving a couple of years later, can he? True. That is an interesting <laughs> It doesn't Dynamic. forget. Yeah, people don't forget. People don't forget. don't forget, Brayden. One of my favorite quotes from Superbad. People don't forget. He was, he's very switched on. He's one of the best uh, heels in the game, Kane oh, Corn. So that is put true, it though. Like, it would, can you imagine? Oh, if he left, it would be hilarious. If Horny Frank doesn't start bringing out tote bags. Oh, my gosh. I would love that more than anything. Just the response from Francis. <laughs> oh, oh Francis. They're already in, he's got him in production, surely. Oh, uh, but. Man. Another good thing for the Ruse, Zach Fisher, the fish. He yeah, went from fish. Carlton over to the Ruse, 36 touches, which is good to see. Another wow. little bit of excitement coming out of there. Yep, um, good player. So, yeah, that's good to see. Now, let's jump into what everyone's been waiting we for. Got? We'll jump into Collingwood v. Richmond, Ooh, uh, the Markov Cup. The Markov Cup. <laughs> Don't we love that? Now, Sponsored by, I want to say it was Food Bank. 
probably should know the sponsor, but we did. There was a pineapple on the trophy, and there were so many questions around that. Yeah, well, I just I don't I don't know. Collingwood got the job done, seventy six to forty six. Yeah, convincing winners. You know, that's a few handful of goals. So pretty good. Yeah. You know, just you don't want to go too too big. Too we early. like thirty points even. You know, and it yeah. was we had to get the last one over the line to get that thirty even. You know, it was, uh, <laughs> so let's jump into the main talking point because it was you know it was pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty relaxed. Everyone really you know happened, chipped you know? away, kicked well, away, and I was like, well, what are we going to talk about in this game? Yeah, pretty quiet. I thought the same thing. Pretty quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so I go on the pod this week. <laughs> What am I going to have to talk about, bro? Well, it was, they're lining up. The siren's going. Sirens game's over. Go. But what? The camera whip pans <laughs> a, a bit of a fracker down on the goal line. They and say then, Mason Cox loves a bit of attention, mate. Who's in there? <laughs> Is there there's Braden Maynard. Who are we looking for? He's not out there. What's going on? And then you get big Mason Cox. He's pushing everyone. He's ragdolling people. He's getting shoved in the face from like quite low down, jumper <laughs> up in there. And, what? Get my shirt taken off at one point. What's I think? going on there? Well, I, I essentially, you know, Billy Frampton told me before, he goes, look, I don't have the legs to make it. I don't have the legs to make it to the line. I need a bit of a distraction. So I said, don't worry, I got you. I'll take on 10 Richmond players. <laughs> I'll get the goal line completely cleared, and you can kick it from 70. Because, yeah, the context is Billy Frampton, Siren, mm. we got, he's 70 out. He said, I did play forward in the last game in the grand final. I loved a bit of the, you know, a bit of the offense, and he's playing back in this game, and he got his opportunity to have a set shot for goal. So I want my I want, I want my credit. <laughs> so what happened in this? Uh, because it, I think it was um was it Marlon Pickett was having a bit of a fight with Ash Johnson, and then you got across and played big protector, big bruiser. Mm, Here big. comes the big Mason Cox in to just mediate this whole thing. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, Ash Ash was uh, he was setting blocks and stuff to maybe have someone kind of lead up with the ball and all that. And he's been doing that all game, going really well. And that's like an unselfish act that we love at the club, right? Love it. And it's something I, as a big man, whenever you go down as a ruckman and someone's blocking your ruckman for you, it is such a good feeling because then you actually get a bit of space rather than having everyone jump on your head and you're essentially, you know, the spotlight everyone looking for just to try to bring the gold ball to ground or take the mark. So you love that as a big man. And whenever you see someone go at him for doing that, you don't want him to be de-incentivized to do that again. <laughs> yeah. So I, in the other hand, love what Ash Johnson does. And unfortunately for Pickett, he wasn't too happy with Ash, what Ash Johnson was doing. Got into him. I wanted to make sure that Ash Johnson does this in the future in the season. So I decided to go over to Pickett and say, look. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> do not hit my player that's doing what I like, what he is doing. And he just proceeded to grab my jumper. And as soon as you grab a jumper, Brayden, it's fucking on. <laughs> there's no there's no getting around it, right? Yeah. As soon as a jumper is pulled and he comes and pulls you chest to chest, face to face, you have no other option but to return fire and grab his jumper. And that's whenever the whole thing kind of started. And it's the whole push shot, push shot. And I'm kind of like, he's not as tall as me, so I'm kind of like pushing down. Yeah. And he's kind of pushing up. And then he kind of just like takes, because he's like pushing up, he kind of like takes my jumper and tries to pull it over my head. Yeah. And then from there, you really don't know what you're swinging at. <laughs> you just start pulling and pushing everywhere. And yeah. I think that's whenever everyone else got involved. Yeah. And then everyone's like, the siren went. I didn't hear it. I didn't know the ball. I didn't know Billy Frampton even had the ball, to be honest. And you go in the scuffle and everything else. And this is the funny part about it, right? And I tell this is a weird thing about AFL. As soon as the siren goes, everyone's mates and everyone shakes hands. So yeah. I'm in a full like... <laughs> shove match with people blah, blah blah and then as soon as I let go of jumpers shake hands shake hands <laughs> shake hands great game hope you have a great week ahead yeah. good luck on the start of the season good stuff mate great to see you again how's yeah. the family been yeah. it was the weirdest dynamic but just such the most AFL thing you could possibly think of and I walked back to the uh, to the to the boys after the uh, after the game and Billy Framley comes up and he goes oh dude thanks bro appreciate that man that was sick and I was like what I do for you <laughs> and he was like I kicked the goal and I was like Oh, you did? No worries. I had no idea until about five minutes after the whole scuffle. <sighs> it was... Uh, anyway, so that's why I did it, so we could talk about this on the podcast, and now here we you. are. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Every time you You're do one of these welcome, things. You're freaking welcome, So if you could just punch... not Maybe not punch on every round. Do something unique every round, but yeah, okay. just get something going. Just piss someone off every round. Yeah, it's a fun way to you know hype up the podcast. I always love it. Uh, but I do want to ask you how you, how you feel coming out of that game. Now, first... 
semi-real game. You got some minutes in there. You played some pretty yeah. good footy. You took a few marks. Yeah, you get the goal missed too, but we don't talk about that. Um, no, it was good. It was good. Everyone uh, went on scathe, which is important. So, um, yeah, it was nice to kind of get a bit of uh, game time around kind of the group that probably is going to be playing round zero. So, uh, to get those four quarters in, uh, obviously there's a bit more, I feel like, in it than the first game. We had a lot of our senior players out. Uh, this one, we kind of had a full team plan. So, uh, yeah, it was it was good to go out there. We had some uh, some guys play that I hadn't uh, played in a while. I want to shout out a guy named Charlie Dane. Oh, Chazza played so well. So excited for him. He's had so many issues with his feet and everything else. And it was just it was just freaking awesome seeing him be out there and just killing it. Like it was so good. I know he's. I can imagine putting myself in his scenario and his, his shoes of just how frustrating it must have been. And it was just so nice to see him out there doing his thing. It is cool because it's extra hard. You know, you got injuries against you, but you're also in one of the top mm. teams. So it's it's hard to break into that side. So any game that you can get out there with the boys must be pretty awesome. Uh, let's jump into next week's preview. Round zero. <laughs> let's, for, let's forget this whole round zero crap because yep. we, we've harped on it yep. long enough. We're getting out there. We're getting up to the New South Wales. We're getting up to the Queensland. We're growing the game. Yep. We're in New South Wales, 7th March, SCG, Sydney v. Melbourne. Big yes. game. Great game. I can't wait for this. Max gone, Brody Grundy at it again. Oh. The two big boys just go after each other. You want to put him as number one on your super coach? We'll see who gets the most stats on the day. How I cool. can't wait. That is a Ruckman's just nom, 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 nom. <laughs> like it is just an absolute feast for the Rucks. Just going at it to the best out there. And um, pretty stoked for that little matchup. They can't definitely wait. planned this. Like they cherry picked the best storylines mm. going into the season and said the biggest trade those for? of the off season or any big trades they always match those two like two clubs up That's every time so cool obviously Melbourne very disappointing in finals two years in a row mm. they got to come out prove themselves Sydney probably played a bit unders to what everyone expected last year so they're going to be wanting to you know start the season off with a win don't we all mate but yep. you know going up there Oliver returns for Melbourne playing after a pretty tumultuous off season Interesting as always. Uh, and, yeah, we're just going to jump straight into it mm. because I can't wait to see Brody Grundy running around out there. Who do you have as more hitouts on the day, Brody or Max? Oh, I still got to say Max. I still got to back go in Brody. Max. It would be pretty even, but I'm going to go Brody. Knowing Brody's like I'm going to go work Brody, ethic Brody is- more hitouts, Max more marks. Brody, more disposals. I reckon just it's going to bring the best out of both of Oh, them, for sure. And it's going to be wild. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I reckon they'll outperform midfielders for sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% agree. Are we doing tips? Because uh, yeah, I reckon I reckon I'll go Sydney up there. Yeah. I'm going to go Melbourne. Yeah. I think Melbourne will win just because they've coughed a bit of flack over the whole finals campaign stuff, and they're pretty fiery about that one too. To prove themselves early. A lot of turbulence coming out of Melbourne. You always want to just get out there and play footy. That's so it. everyone forgets all about it. Now, talk about forgetting about things. Brisbane are going to want to forget that they lost the grand final last mm. year. Just repeating. Brisbane lost the grand final last year. Right uh, but they're up at the Gabba yep. on Friday Back at night. Back at the, str- the streak of undefeatedness at the Gabba Don't continues. they wish that they could have played the grand final at the Gabba Tour, but they couldn't. Mm. MCG, where we know they're no good. But here we go. Brisbane versus Carlton. Carlton on the back foot. Yep. Injuries galore up there. Can they go up? And I guess start the season off because everyone's been saying, oh, they're favorites for the flag. They've got to be favorites for the mm. flag. If you don't think that they're favorites, you haven't been watching footy. Now, if they go up there and get pumped by Brisbane, I think that's what they're doing it for. They're setting Carlton up here for some oh, failure. Man. So if Carlton come out and win. But this is the thing, though. Carlton, whenever they played Brisbane in the prelim, were up by a decent chunk at like half time or quarter time. Mm. So it's not like an unfeasible thing for them to win up there. I don't think it is whatsoever. Do I think they're going to win? No. no. I think Brisbane will win. Gabba, home ground. They're excited to get back in front of their fans. Um, obviously, a bit of a point to prove with the last game they played. Uh, in the grand final and, you know, wanting to uh, to get back into it. I think, like, after 2018 and every loss, the first thing we want to do is just get back to playing So we wanted to get back to that experience and try to get back there again. So I think um, them at the Gabba, you know, we talk about it being a fortress all the time, and it's, I don't know how many games in a row they've won up there. It's, like, it's double digits, I want to say. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a very tough ask for Carlton, that's for sure. I'll say again, journalists have set Carlton up here. Mm. They go, Carlton have to be... 
like favourites for the flag. So when they come out round one, if they get pumped by Brisbane, boy, oh boy, they're on the back foot from round one. Easy headlines for them. Uh, if they win, see, I told you. I told yeah. you they should be favourites. It's one of those double jeopardy win-wins for the yeah. journos. They get to write off that they, they got it good either way. Uh, but, yeah, I got Brisbane up there and – I don't know. I'll say quite convincingly, but even that, it's probably like five goals maybe. Tom, Tom. Uh, Next game, what do we got? Uh, we got Gold Coast v. Richmond. Dimmer versus old team up on the Gold Coast. Nothing would make me happier than seeing Dimmer show up in jorts, jean shorts for this game. That would make me just smile from ear to ear. I I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to get this through to him, but please just show up in jorts and runners. And I will just love this more than anything in the world. Yeah, like those boat shoes. Yep. <laughs> just full, just really lean into it. Yeah. Really lean into it. I mean, you got smashed by GWS last game in a preseason game. I mean, you might as well just have a bit of fun. But I reckon they've matched them up, not only, obviously, the storyline, Dimmer V's old club. They're mm. a chance. My boys, I've told you this multiple times, my boys, the Gold Coast Suns, are making finals this year, Braden. See, they're, Gold Coast are another one when you're picking finals. It's too competitive to squeeze them in there. I think what will happen is Gold Coast, bit of a rocky start to the year. Learning a new game plan, you might like be close to winning a few games, but you won't be able to close them out. And then about like a, th- a third of the way through the year, they're going to hit their straps. They're going to win like six in a row. And then who knows what's going to happen in the last third. Jeepers. If that comes to fr- fruition, we'll clip that up. Just uh, and then let's head into the smallest match of the round. Just a little game up at Giant Stadium. GWS versus Collingwood. They've hidden it uh, at Saturday night. Uh, big game. Big Mason mm. Cox beef game. Got the <laughs> Dave Matthews band up there chirping away. Uh, they're saying, we hate Sydney. We hate Collingwood. I don't hear many people talking about GWS, uh, but it – They've, they've created their own rivalry up there. So Hey, they're a good team. They've only beat them by a point in the prelim. So they're one of the teams that I think will be top four this year. It's going to be a tough game for us. Uh, yeah, there has been a bit of commentary around it. Don't get me wrong. All the Sydney kind of like board members and stuff have been really chirpy this offseason, which is interesting. they got to drum up some excitement. Um, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, it's going to be a good game up there uh, at the showgrounds. Um, and that's that's all I'm going to say. Mm, yeah, because you don't want to put any more petrol on the on the fire, but I've that's been, exactly what they want. My mouth has been taped shut, bro. I've, They're I've combing through this podcast looking for little nuggets. That's it doesn't matter what happen. I say. You're going to go up there and flog them, <laughs> the little peasant club. What are you, your 12 members? Is that, this is your words. They're not, not going to clip up what I say. That's all right. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be – you guys match up incredibly well. It's always a good game. They're always, always good such game. a good game. And, obviously, I was on GWS all last year. Um Good club, and if they can do what they did in the second half of the year for an entire year, yeah, they'll finish on top. They'll win the flag. <laughs> They're that bloody good. They got star players all the way through the list, I and do. they just they know the game plan inside star and players out. And make an absolute bank, as we learned last yeah, week. Yeah, there's so many millionaires in that team, but you know. You got that Dave Matthews band money rolling in the door. <laughs> You're getting those royalty checks. Uh, you're passing it straight on. But it's going to be that's game of the round, is it? Game of the round? You'd say we'll, so, surely. We'll say a non biased game of the round, Collingwood GWS. <laughs> and uh, I'm guessing we're both tipping Collingwood reluctantly, I reckon. I probably, if I was didn't have Mason holding a gun to my head out of frame, <laughs> I'd probably say GWS wins Typical that one. But comment of an American <laughs> we'll holding see, a gun to someone's head. We'll see how we go. All right, we've got an interesting segment coming mm. up because I want to dive straight into this one, Mace. It says new segment. I'm a bit confused. I'm a bit nervous at the same time, Brayden. What is it? Mace, let me break it down for you because mm. I've come up with a good concept because – as you remember, BT Grand Final 2016. Yep. Uh, we got Tom Boyd kicks the goal, <sighs> and he adds favorites. just a little bit of flavor on there. He drops the magic. F- flavor is what you mean. Yeah. He, he, he drops the <laughs> f- word right in the middle, and obviously, yep. makes that highlight iconic. Yep. Lives forever. The best. So let's jump into it. My concept is: mm. what commentary would sound better if you added swearing to it? Oh, jeez. So we're thinking yep. back all the old moments that has happened in history. Yep. We're taking the existing commentary. Yeah. And we're just adding a little magic to it. We're going to redo it a little bit. I'll make sure to bleep it. Okay. Because if I don't. Family show. We might be done. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, so what let me. First? For an example, I don't know if you can pick up what I'm putting down. So, yep. so you do the commentary and I'll set it up. So this is, let me take you back. 
Heath Shaw comes from behind with the smother. Schneider, long kick in. Schneider, will he give it to Rewalt? He will. Rewalt runs in. Touched off the boot. Oh, my f- Good goodness, wonderful chase by Heath Shaw. He came up behind him like a librarian. He never f***ing even heard him coming. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. Would you it. expect the F-bomb? That was the whole purpose of this f***ing segment. Is it not? Yeah. To no, say f- as good. much as you can because you're going to bleep this out. It was good. did make it better. He was f***ing pretty better. good. It did make it better. So you get it. Uh, yeah, I get you it. Get okay, it. yep. Okay. Right, I'll, I'll, try, I'll test you out on number two on Set this list. Set me up because I reckon you remember this. This is a good one. I forget who we're playing. It might have been Richmond, actually. I think Richmond. it was Richmond. Darcy Moore gets it on the angle at the corner of the 50 arc in the boundary, and he kicks it in to the BG. Sets it up. One mark. Hasn't happened. Still a chance. Is it a goal? It is. Pies are in front. Was it Grundy? It was f- Grundy. <laughs> get the vibe. I get the vibe. I understand that. Good goal, that one. Match yep. winner. What are we? What's next on this thing? Oh, the classic BT. Oh man, I feel like we could just just we should just do Brian Taylor over and over again. Oh, let me just jump straight into this one. Big pack forms. Pew up low. He went up with a full force of his body, and now roughhead. That was out of bounds. That was out of bounds. That was f***ing out of bounds. That's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Oh, geez. I'm loving this segment. I'm done. All right. What's the last one we got here? Nick Davis just before the siren, Mace. Siren could go at any second. Swans need a goal. Nick Davis. Nick f***ing Davis. I don't believe it. I see it, but I don't f***ing believe it. That's you, you've nailed that one. I, I like the after the That's fact good. where he goes oh. with a capital C. <laughs> Hutto, watch your we'll language, you Hutto. The, my brother. the listeners to the pod sent in those moments. So I don't know. Mm. I don't know if that's a re- reoccurring segment. We'll see how it goes. Oh, but it definitely got us up and going. Did it make the moments better? That's what we want to get to the bottom of, mate. Are we going to be broadcasters in the future? I think we can convincingly say. No. We love fan questions. Love them. Uh, it's, we talk about the community all the time on this podcast, and we love people actually, you know, giving us feedback and answering the questions on social media. Caring enough to put it out there, like Rachel cares when she asks, is there a communicated, like, a level of aggression? How hard you go in training? Does Fly say, let's go 10 out of 10, or does he go, let's go 4 out of 10? Oh, uh, you're always 10 out of 10, but I think there's, like, certain things you don't do. You don't sling tackle people. You don't try to hit people high. Um, there's a level, yeah, I guess there is a level of aggression that you understand. Like as Ruckman, you're probably not going to like, you know, really beat the living hell out of each other and try to like, you know, do someone's spleen, let's say hypothetically. Um, yeah, so there, there is a communicated level of training, but you have to know when is too much, when's not like going and sticking, like going full speed, jumping into the back of someone's head, like mm. not on, right. Yeah. Or you back out of contest if someone's going back of the flight. Like there's certain things you look after your teammates with that in a game, obviously would probably be a different situation playing against opposition. But Rachel, yes, there is, but probably not as much as you think. Yeah. Probably wouldn't leave the ground, bump mm. head high someone late. That's just kicked the footy. Um, <laughs> who, who will kick the first goal for the pies? Against GWS. That's from Dan Walker. I really want Lockie Schultz to do it. And then I really want his <laughs> want his celebration to just be the double pistols. Because yeah. we call him shooter, right? Oh, yeah. We call him shooter. And I feel like this the umpire double pistols is just so on brand for him and his nickname. It would make me happy. The boys would get around the first goal in the official game. It'd be a great start to the year. Like Shooter McGavin and the shooter. Happy Gilmore. Oh I don't, gosh. I don't yes. like the um you you Beat your chest with your jumper after one game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably not the go-to. <laughs> Probably not the go-to. That's right. Uh, who's the least popular, most disliked player in the AFL? I'll give the caveat. Not you. You can't say yourself. Okay. Well, that was the first thing. Um, oh, there's a lot. Of, I mean, there's... <laughs> Oh, there's tons. I yeah. hate this guy and that no, guy. No, not, not personally. I actually don't have anything against any players. So what um, you think the fans The think. fans, yeah. I think the most, like, probably hated on social media and stuff and caught the most criticism. Toby Green used yeah. to be, but he's actually come a bit, like, I think since he was captain of the Australian team last year, people yeah. started to respect him a bit more. Yeah, he's flipped it. Yeah, and he's flipped it a bit. He used now to be the I, most hated. Yeah. Now I want to see him karate kick people. Yeah. So, uh, well, no, I'm probably not best. Um, another person, Stephen May. Yeah. He was, for some reason, he's always hated. I'm not really sure. Misunderstood. Just a bloke from Darwin. Misunderstood, I think. Yeah, he's just a bloke from Darwin. Um, Horn Francis, obviously, the whole situation around Ice Bass and North Melbourne. Yeah, Um, North Vance. Zorko, Brisbane. I think every opposition probably 
how he's a bit of a, you know, a little bit of an extra yeah, extra he, spice to his game, you could say. He falls into that category, blokes you hate unless they play for your team. Yep, agreed. And speaking of that, Guinea. Yeah. Which, Guinea's another one I think so that probably... I love him still, but I think fans yeah. probably are infuriated with the high tackling situation. With yeah, him. you know what I hate when he always ducks, always looking for free kicks, mate. Keep Brad, your feet. You've changed. You've changed in a year uh, sorry, very in that quickly. Poo and pee jumper. Very quickly, you've changed. Uh, let's jump into the next one. If you had a cook off with Christian P. Traka, <laughs> what would you cook? Oh, um, geez, we've talked about my banana bread being dope. Don't get me wrong. And I did buy an air fryer the other day. I don't know if he's had a little segment of air frying, but I'm, I'm getting into the cooking a bit. Uh, probably miso salmon with, just keep it simple, a bit of like, you know, coconut rice and, and veg. Um, I would love to do this, actually. I don't know how we make this happen. If you like tag off. and make this into a clip and say like tag Christian Petraka in this to say like either come on the pod or let's do a cooking competition like Hell's Kitchen style or yeah. Master Chef style. I'm not sure what's popular nowadays, but we get, oh, Matt Preston will judge it. Me versus Christian Petrarca oh. in a full cooking competition. Let's make this thing happen. We got the hookup. We need something riding on it. We need mm. maybe you put it out to the fans. What's on the line in a cook off between Mason Cox and Christian Petrarca, judged by Matt Preston? What's on the line? It's a good question. Bit of dignity. I think is probably <laughs> the biggest thing. Oh, I don't know. We'll what what can I there. give him as like a? I don't think he'd want anything of mine. Maybe Pe- uh, no, maybe like. If he goes to America in the off season, like whoever wins, sorry, whoever loses has to take them to a professional sporting event. Yeah. How about that? Nice. I think that'd be nice. I reckon we, we'll put it out there. And it has to be like nice, Chuck like you. floor tickets. Can't be the local <laughs> field hockey. No. Nah. Uh, Can't be the cricket league over there. <laughs> nothing against local field hockey. Don't don't come for me. I know they're rabid. Jeez, oh, between your comments about Tasmania and that, <laughs> it's not a good look for you. What uh, we got next? How do you feel about fans coming up to you in public? I've been there for this. Happens yes. often. You um, you have been there for this. I don't I, have the patience. I I don't like I don't mind it, but I just always kind of find it weird mm. because I I see myself as a normal person. So whenever people kind of like know a bit about my life and professional life, is yeah. just like a very interesting experience. Yeah. Um. I don't know. It's 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 an odd thing. I know I stick out like a sore thumb. I get it. Um. People do come up to me. You take photos and all that kind of stuff. But the weird thing I find a lot right is people don't always have like the confidence to say hi to you until they've passed you. Yeah. So you'll walk past someone. I think in their brain, the gears are grinding of tall person, basketball, no, AFL, yes, sounds American, Mason Cox. Mm. And by the time they get to that deduction of deductive reasoning or whatever, they they kind of shit themselves. And then they turn around and go, Coxie! And then you're like, yeah, it's Kind of too late. Yeah. You're a bit past the situation. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit of an awkward one. I'm not going to lie. And I don't understand why people just scream your last name but don't really want to talk to you. Yeah. I, I don't get that. I like how people just take a photo of you. When they're like, can I get a photo? And you're assuming <laughs> with, with, with them you. in it. <laughs> And that they just go, bang, take a and photo. And just like, what do I do with my hands? Yeah. Real freaking What are you going to do with that? Talladega Night style. What do I do with my hands? Oh, they're the ones that weird me out. You don't chew Big Red, then fuck you. <laughs> we got a final one here, and this is great. Uh, I paid $700 for oh. Pi's 46 number plate. Oh, geez. Is that number one fan material? That Yeah, I would say $700 for Pi's 46 um, that's that's phenomenal. I don't know what taken. the running rate is for the license plates nowadays, but seven hundred dollars is a it's a fair whack. Very brave. Mm. Now knowing your car is probably going to get keyed. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than my car getting pissed on last year, like it did. Um, yeah. Anyway, that is it. But I want to I want to start this segment at the very end, Brayden. I want to kind of wrap everything up with a bit of a final thoughts. This doesn't have to be football related. Yeah, this is just life. Like, is there anything? That you want to kind of shout out? Is there anything that's going on? I've got one, but I'll, yeah. I'll let you. I do want to it. make it footy related, just for this first one. Yeah, and it's awesome, just a sweet. plea that I'm putting out there. Yeah. No head high bumps this week, fellas. Let's just rein <laughs> Let's it in. Rein it in. Round zero, first time ever. Uh. Let's just keep it clean. Big games. That's enough to be exciting. Let's not give them anything to write off about. Let's not be paying any fines. Mm. We just want to go out there, play some good football, and come away with the four points. Uh, so just keep it clean. Keep it clean to start the season. That's my pitch. That's my appeal to the players out there. Yep. 
Okay, I'll go with mine. If my glasses or goggles, as you say, get ripped off again, can we just give the fine to Guide Dogs Victoria? Oh. I've just become an ambassador. I think that's a nice thing to do, AFL. I don't know where the money goes at the moment. I assume it goes to some fund that probably pays someone at the AFL. But if we could just give that money to someone, that'd be a nice little gesture. And then we'll get a ticker on the broadcast. That mm. Every time they get ripped off your head, it goes a number up. One, two, three. How much is it? Two grand a pop? Two grand a pop. Two grand a pop. That's pretty good. He'd know. <laughs> we, yeah. Anyway, that's it for the podcast. We're going to end on that one. Thanks, everyone, for listening. As always, cheers for being part of the community. Like, share, comment, all that jazz on the social media and YouTube and whatnot. And just massive thank you for being absolute legends. But that is it from us. So have a great day, great week ahead of you, and we'll see you after round zero. Yeah. <laughs>